All right, cool. So, hey, um, thank you very much for joining us on this evening's edition of Autograph. And uh, I'm here at my former place of work. That's the Graphic Communications Group. And I'm here to have a conversation with the man in charge, the managing director. He has a very interesting story to share with us over the next one hour. You know, included in this long conversation will be how he met his wife and uh, what he decided to do on the first day when he met this beautiful lady, where he decided to take her on a tour of the KNUST campus, beginning from his room. Hmm. I'm sure you're itching to hear more. Well, all of these and more will be revealed right here on the show with the managing director of the Graphic Communications Group. And uh, I'd like to say thank you to Royal Dennis for my outfit. It's going to be an interesting and entertaining one hour. And all I'd like to tell all of you is do not touch that remote control because you'd miss out on a lot if you do. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you very much for staying with us. And as I always do, I bring you one of your many favorite people on Saturday evenings. I'm glad to be in your company as always. Let me first of all say thank you to Royal Dennis for uh, my outfit. Thank you very much to Gorgeous by Royal Dennis. Now today, I'm like I told you earlier, this is a very exciting person. We always see him go up and about with his current job as managing director of the Graphic Communications Group. But of course, he has so many other sides to his life, including the fact that he's managed many media outfits, key media outfits in this country, making him uh, what we could describe as an authority when it comes to media practice in Ghana. He's also a sports person and uh, the vice president of the Ghana Table Tennis Association. Has a rather solid frame, and I'll be asking him later on during the show whether he's done any boxing or anything that requires a lot of physical work. Ken Ashigbe, managing director of Graphic Communications Group, is my guest tonight on the show. Thank you very much, senior. Thanks. Yeah, nice. and I call him senior because he's also a life fine product of St. Augustine's College, Cape Coast. Yes, very uh, proud of I that. I never met him there, though. <laughs> <laughs> very proud of that. <laughs> Definitely, aren't we all? Mm. Good to see you again. Thank you, Nat. Um, yeah, I was talking about your sports, you know, mm. self mm. and your sporting self. Um, did you, have you ever used this frame, this physical frame of yours well, to do anything sport? In, well, interestingly, back in school, you know, we did, I bet we attempted a bit of the spreads. You know, I sprint. Yes, you know. I, see. <laughs> I remember trying to do. Okay, so it means that way back then you were you were trim. Oh, you had very a... trim, very okay. trim. Okay, you know, but ended up in Augustine's playing volley, and then um, when I went to Tech as well, you know, for Queens we were playing volley. But I think the thing I did which was very active was the cadet. You know, I from one to upper six I was in the cadet. Okay, did you become a commander? Yes, yes, time? you know, I commanded the cadet in in St. Augustine's College and also in tech as well. I see. You know, and I look at, back at people who went to my tutelage and now they are military men and you know, I'm sure if I was in the army by now I should have been a colonel, you know. But I missed the opportunity of um, the two things I missed of having my wedding swords crossed and also when I die, you know, the military burial. Those are the things I really looked up to. But, well, we're also paying our dues to Ghana in this, what we're doing now. Okay. So you've managed Optimum Media Prime within the, uh, the Metro TV mm. stables. And you're one of the pioneering managing, uh, you know, uh, general managers of Multi TV mm. right here. Mm. And um, you've also been there at Joy FM as general mm. manager before. Mm. Uh, mm. before taking up this position. Yeah. Um, so much operation within media circles. Mm. Well, very interesting. You know, I, I did not start off as a media person. Uh, my first love is electrical engineering. Uh, I went to tech, uh, did um, a BSc in electrical engineering. And I started off working as an electrical engineer. And I love getting dirty. You know, I love doing the actual contracting work. Then in 2002, my friend uh, William Sam, you know, had mentioned to me that uh, one of our mates, uh, Joe B, uh, who was then of uh, blessed memory, who was then the, uh, the head of engineering at Joy yeah. FM, was going into the States. So was this something I was interested in? And, you know, I've been an avid listener to Joy FM, you know, since Joy FM started. So I thought it was an interesting opportunity, you know. Opportunity, you know? So <laughs> having pulled cables for quite a long time, since 1996, I thought, okay, let, let me give this a try. 
So I jumped into Joy FM January 2003 as a chief technology officer, you know, running around. till one day, I think in April, when Chrissy Chum called me to his house, it was the first day he had invited me to his house. And the question he asked me was like, you know, I was wondering what I, what's happening to this man, <laughs> what I wanted to be, you know, general manager for Joy FM. And I was like, well... You know, but, you know, people from St. Augustine's College, you love challenges, you know. Definitely. So I said, yes, why not? You know, though inside of me, I was asking, <laughs> is he correct? You know, <laughs> is he fully correct? And the rest of it, as they say, is history. It's been a very interesting experience, you mm. know, running media, managing media, producing content, finding things that can excite your your readers, your listeners, your viewers. And it's, it's, it's been an, an interesting experience. Since Tell me more about, about school and all the extracurricular activity. Mm. You spoke about being the cadet commander. Mm. I mean, that must have made you a very powerful person when you were, you were back in school. Uh, very much so. You know, I, I remember Fridays when you're going to go on route march uh, on Saturday. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody to go and visit there. the girls. You well, know, not do necessarily. The route marches through, the, route marches through yeah. the schools, you know. Yeah. Uh, Holy Child will not allow you to come through their school with, with, at some point. They were not allowing us. But at least you go to National, you go to uh, uh, Agri Memorial, you know. The boys' schools, they envy that, so we normally would leave them out. And, you you know, the camouflage and the boots and all were not enough, you know, and everybody was really clamoring Scrambling for that. You on. know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, very nice experiences, you know, the whole thing. And in Cape Coast as well, you didn't have... Um, military people in Cape Coast. Mm. So we were the focal points for Sex March, you know, and, you know, you were on parade, you're doing everything they were doing in Accra. It was a very nice experience. I remember our PSI, permanent instructor, I met, you know, he's being an ex-service man. It was a nice experience, you know, being in the cadet. And I think a few of the interesting days were when we did mock parliament in school and there were, you know, coups and all of that. It's very interesting experiences. Mm. And back in August, to it was not only just the cadets, you know. I believe that if you go to any institution, it's not just about learning. School, you go, to, you don't go to school only for academic work. You need to be a total person. I was very active in the mass service, you know. I would. Oh, you, you, know, you were a mass yeah, server, and I still am uh, a mass server, you know. I still am a mass server. Uh, hold on. So <laughs> you were a mass server. Mm. Didn't you get, you know, didn't anything about working from the pulpit, you know? You know, well, that's interesting. You, like uh, becoming a Catholic a priest. priest. I think it did. You know, that, that interest was there. Because I was a master since uh, 1977. At age seven, that was when I was a master in St. Teresa's Parish here. And a lot of my mates, you know, there's a friend of mine who was called Clement. Okay. And by then, people used to mix it up. They called me, they would call me Clement Ashibi. They would call him Kenneth Wilson, you know. I see. He went off to become a priest, I you see. know. So, even in priesthood as well, there are a lot of people we brought up through our Mass seven days who become priest and well maybe I was cut for matrimony so yeah. I opted. Oh, you, to, you were cut for matrimony. You see, maybe I was cut for matrimony. My my <laughs> calling was into matrimony, so okay. I opted. You know, the other way around. And but I still support a lot of priests and a lot of religious. You know, what I mean, and for me, it's still a passion. And once in a while, you know, we still go onto the altar. The only thing is that this time when we go into the altar, we wear cassocks. We look like bishops rather than <laughs> mass servants. <laughs> you know. I see. Mm. Okay, so you were a mass server. You you did a bit of the cadet. What else? Uh, mm. as, as, in the, as, as in the Legion of Mary, you know, as in the Legion of Mary um, as well. And um, generally for me, uh, in school it was academics, it was cadets, it was uh, the social ones I didn't do too much of. And I was a prefect. You know, I was a dining hall prefect in Augustine. So a lot of the people, I see a lot of my genius and when they see me, the, 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 the whole attitude to me was like, this man was a wicked man, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about that. You know, I remember Kojo mentioned yeah, something you, about... Yeah, you were a wicked man. No, I mean, no, I was you, not. I was, I was strict as a disciplinarian. And the interesting thing I loved to do was deal with the senior boys. Okay. So you found out that I did not go... I normally would not be tough on the junior ones. Because, you see, it's, 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 it's a thing about leadership. Once the people are in a park, if you're able to deal with the strong ones, what happens is that everybody falls in line. Okay. So in the dining hall, you come in and, you know, you target somebody who you know is big, misbehaving. <laughs> you go straight towards him and you make sure he submits. Everybody else will be quiet. It makes life easier for you as a leader, you know. 
<laughs> did you ever get yourself in trouble? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I did. You know, I, I remember the days of um, Father Mensa, you mm. know, one of our... Father priests. Mensa is legendary. Uh, exactly, Everybody who's exactly, been to St. Augustine exactly. talks about him. You know, you know, being young boys were not here, but went to town, you know, where he caught us, chased us. You know, he was like a Formula One driver. Interesting, wow. you know what I mean? And we had to escape. And I think another one... So he caught you in town and you had to yeah, run... Yeah, yeah, run off. You know what I mean? We had I, gone to, I think we had gone to Jet to eat Wachi. Okay. You know what I mean? And, you, you mean know, you didn't enter the nightclub Jet? No, know? no. This Jet to eat... This Jet, the Wachi point, you know... It was called Jet. It was called Jet. And it's still there, you know, at... I see. Uh, at Kotokraba, you know, to go okay. and eat Wachi. That was it. Okay. And I remember another interesting one was when we were going to town and we stopped myself and one of my mates. I don't know whether he'll be... He would want me to call his name, so I will not mention his name. But okay. we stopped <laughs> off, you know, right across um, the beach, and we stopped the taxi. So there were two, there were in, there were two people, and the three people in the taxi. There was only one, the driver in front, and two people at the back. You know, so we sat at the, I sat at the front, and my friend sat at the back, at the middle. But when we got to the mortuary junction, then the driver said, "Oh, he's branching off and dropping these people here." <laughs> That was a corpse, <laughs> you know. The way we we jumped out hold of on, the car. Hold on, hold on, Ken. The man in the middle was a corpse, and they were carrying him to the morgue. Oh, no one thing to go I, and you I'm are telling, kidding I'm me. Telling you, my friend was <laughs> shaking all like that, and so, all was. So what, what? What did it look like? I mean, had they oh, covered? Was, no, 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 no. You're sitting in the middle as a passenger. Stiff. Well, I didn't, we didn't even notice it was stiff. He was sitting, so my friend was, he noticed that when the, when the vehicle fell in the pothole, the man just moved, you know. It was, it was a very interesting experience. I'm sure it prevented us from running to town for the next month or so. Only one know? month? I mean, <laughs> you know? I was expecting that you'd say for the well, rest of your we, stay. We, you see, and then those are the things that you learn and then you realize that, when you're in school and they talk about discipline, it's important to be disciplined. You know, yeah. these are risks that you don't need to take, you know. Because okay, so, so, so that, that morning, mm. or was it in the morning? It was in the evening. It was in the evening. Yeah. Oh, and you sat in a cab with a corpse. Exactly. Okay, great. Now, um, so what were you going to do? Was what, it to go I think, have some I think, drinks, no, to, no, to I go think hang my, out? What, I, what it might be either hang out or it might be the same old watch it thing. You know, you don't, we don't know what... I went back to Cape Coast and I tasted Jet. And I was saying, I didn't taste like that. You know, but back I'm then. sure when we, were, when we were kids, it tasted so so good. So good. Yes, All right. so good. All right. So, so um, once you, you realized that it was a corpse and mm. the, the driver mm. was branching into mm. the hospital mm. to go and drop the, mm. the body, mm. what, what, how did you We jumped get off back? the car. We didn't, we did, you know, I mean, waiting for him to go drop. We jumped out of the car. And then it was, um, so there's a paradox. This is Kenneth Ashibi was in front, who did not feel the corpse. Okay. Who wants to go, still go to town? Ah, we've gone through this, and then this is my friend who says, "No, no, he touched me. No, no, no. This, let's go back to school. <laughs> you know, let's go back to school. Yes, and you know. So finally, now I had to babysit him, bring him back to school, <laughs> and make sure that now I moved. Did he have him. any nightmares? Or well, anything? I don't. I'm not too sure what happened to him. He was on his own in Kelly House, and I ran off to St. Teresa's. You didn't get livid with the driver for for. Hey, we got livid. Told him a few fanties that I will not say on TV. <laughs> you know what I mean? Very, very livid because why would he even stop? You know, but this is somebody who thought, Well, let me drop my passengers and my cargo off at the morgue, and then I'll continue to town with you. Greedy driver wanted to make extra money, <laughs> extra back with us, you know. Yes, well, if you were back there in high school or secondary school or what is now known as senior high, high school, school. what's well, a college, you know, for us, it was a college, Definitely. and it's still a college. <laughs> Ken was in a college, mm. and he has some wonderful experiences to mm. share with us here on Auto as we always do to spice up your Saturday evening. So you stay right there. There is more to come. Uh, you know, more revelations aside, you know, that one, uh, sharing the same space with a corpse that they did not have an idea about. So there it is. So much more to come right here on Autograph. You stay right there. <laughs> Well, if you've been a part of the first part of this show, then you may have learned one thing or two about the managing director of the Graphic Communications Group, Ken Ashibe, who, uh, you know, just told us something would have been rather very uncomfortable if you had found yourself in that situation. But, well, he's managed to pull himself out of that. It was several years ago. 
Uh, I'm sharing his company, and uh, we've got a lot more to talk about. Ken, um, you spoke about being the tough guy back in school, the prefect mm. and all of that. And I'm wondering what kind of support system you had back at home and what kind of family mm. you mm. came from. Okay. Did you see, uh, what, a strict set of parents? Did you see, mm. uh, you well, know? Well, my, my father was very strict. You know, I, I see the way my kids relate to me now and I didn't, I didn't used to do that with my father <laughs> at all. You know what I mean? Would, my father was the one who would run away from when, you know, he's coming home and all of that. But... Very strict, but still very jovial. Unfortunately, he left us, you know, at 13. When I was 13, mm -hmm. when I was preparing to go to St. Augustine's College, was, wow. he had gone to a funeral of my, mo my mother's mom, my grandmother, and was coming and had an accident, you wow. know. So, so he left. sorry about but that. But he was, he was a great man, I'm sure. Uh, very great man. Very affable man. You know, he loved fun. He loved, he loved you know, he loved his drink as well, a bit of it, you know, mm. I mean, he loved to have fun. There were a lot of people who used to come to my house when my father was alive, you know, and interestingly, that's another thing that life teaches you. Immediately my father died, you know, all of them, they all evaporated. Then I have a mom who is a sweet woman, very sweet woman. Interestingly, my mom had beaten me only once. She and had beaten you only once throughout, once throughout my life. What did once. you do? You know, I think I remember very well, I'd gone to the fridge, opened it and swung it open, you know, and I was angry. You know, about something that had happened and, you know, to show my anger. And So what exactly did she do? Did she, she use her hands? She used her hand to hit my backside. And I, it was not the pain because my mom couldn't beat me that hard. But I cried more than eight because I was so shocked <laughs> that my mom would beat me. I, you know what I mean? Because it's the only time she had done that, you know. Yeah. And interestingly, when my, mom, my father died at um, 13, the things my mom had to go through for us, you know. I remember my mom, this is a nurse, she had to go to Kanishi, carry charcoal on the head, you know, bring it home. Me. You know, I sold charcoal, I sold ice cream. So I was grounded, you know. My father's was when my father was alive, things were so good. He died and things became difficult. Mm -hmm. But my mother just said, you know, I remember when my father died and I asked my auntie, you know, you had I, siblings? I had siblings. I have two siblings. I'm in the middle. You know, I'm, I'm the only boy in between my two sweet sisters, okay. Joyce and Nerissa. I and see. I'm in the middle. You know. I see. Now, um, you, you spoke about selling charcoal yeah, and yeah. ice cream. Yes. <sighs> so tell me, so, tell so, me, tell me about a regular day uh, trying to get. Uh, first of all, where where mm, were you selling? I, this? You know, I lived lived in Awudume Estates. You okay. know, so the interesting thing is that my my mother said, you know, you're still going to go to school. You know, whatever whatever a beard you're going to go to school, and I could see the challenges my mother was going through to be able to see us through school. My mother was working two jobs in Ghana. She was a, she was a nurse. She would come back and go to Eden Hospital, still at a nurse. You know, so we sold charcoal, we sold ice cream, and all of that. And I think that. And I, I want you to. Tell me, so give me a, a presentation of so a little bit. Yes. Of a, a regular day, you've mm. carried ice cream from the house yeah. you're going to sell. So, you know, so this you've done, you've gone to school, you've come back. You know, so you have an, uh, a, a little opening. And most of the time, ice cream was mostly during holidays, you know. But during school days, uh, we used to, I used to sell, uh, myself and a friend of mine called Fred, we used to sell Gary at home. So mm -hmm. you come back, you have a Gary, you package it in such a way, you move around. So you have, a, you have an opening in which you're supposed to sell that. But my mom was still insist that you're supposed to study. So you go take the thing and ice cream was such that it was a lollipop you know what i mean it yeah. would melt yeah. if you don't sell it quickly, quickly enough you're in trouble did you ever have any day or any uh, mm. you know particular day where okay you you get into town ice cream is not selling as fast as it has to and it, it gets melted yeah. well it happens you know I mean, it's happened sev it happened several times and, and how did you manage to so get what back you home? then do is that you see I, I, wouldn't, I needed to get back home with an empty ice chest. But I had also grown up so quickly, I realized the fact that I was no more a kid. I was no more that kid again that would enjoy the ice cream. I realized that I needed the money to be able to do some things. So when the ice cream is beginning to get to a particular point, I was smart enough to realize that if my commission on the ice cream was a CD, I could reduce the price a bit and sell it off and get 50 pesos. Okay. So I think one of the things I learned was that I never came back home with melted ice cream. And it's one of the things that helped me when I was, when I was managing media. Mm -hmm. To the extent that, you know, I mean, when you got to the time where it was radio, Joy FM, airtime is perishable. And the time was getting to the point where you needed to offload the airtime. You needed to manage your discount. You needed to manage your commissions to still be able to make your revenues. And for me, it's one of the things, I've not done marketing school. 
but I, I'm but you know in all my businesses I've learned marketing right because of the as a kid you know from what I had gone through and with the training and the grooming I'd got I got I brought it here the young you the young mm. Ken who is out there on the streets trying to sell you know ice cream trying to sell charcoal how did you sell the charcoal if i may ask well charcoal was charcoal was at the home so okay. basically people had to come but what you then needed to do was to tell people that oh you know we also sell charcoal at home i you see know, people look at your house did, did you ever have any situation where somebody probably older mm. probably tried to get the ice cream without yeah. well, paying for it or yeah, something well that, that happened that that you know a few people would attempt that and I think that was the other side of me, you know, it was me and my cousin Charles. You know, you wouldn't do that. You know, I, you know, I am in as an ever, I am a shibe. As a gun, I'm a shite. Okay. You know what I mean? So when What's the goes, meaning of a oh, in ever? I, it's a market day. I see. Yeah, my, I think my, my grandfather was born on a market day, so a shibe. You know, I mean, it became his name. But me, I still, I know You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So that won't happen. That won't happen. So we'll, we'll, str we'll struggle it out, and I'll make sure that you know that you know this thing. You still will bring yeah, your money home. Yeah, I still have to bring my money home because I realize I know what I, the money is supposed to be doing. You know, so I see that 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 won't happen. I see. You got out of school. You got into university. Now things were mm. getting clearer mm. for you, mm. and um, you decided to study um, electrical, electrical, engineering. electrical engineering. Yeah, I did primary school in Prince of Peace. Uh, went to St. Augustine's College, Form One to Upper Six. Then came, went to Tech. Mm. Uh, in going to Tech, I wanted to do electrical engineering. I missed it. You know, I got admission for mechanical engineering. So I decided, no, no, no. I didn't. I, I, so I started first year mechanical engineering. Got some good grades. So I was able to change from mechanical engineering to uh, electrical engineering. Studied electrical engineering and majored in telecoms. But interestingly, when I got out, I had the fortune of working with one great gentleman. Um, he's called Mr. Jangma. He's, he's now in the absence of my father. I would call him my father. Uh, Kwesi Chum is my junior father. You know, he, we are closer in age. But uh, Alambi, Mr. Jangma, is my father. You know, and he taught me electrical engineering. He taught me the fact that you needed to respect everybody you worked with. So you find out in my work, I get immersed with the people I work with. Um, back then, you know, as a young electrical engineer, you're working with older people, electricians who've been doing this business for a very long time. You need to realize that they have skills that they need to teach you. Mm -hmm. that you would take a little bit of time to, to learn. And then because you have had universal education, you would learn it quicker, and then you have things to teach them. Great time at Fanel, you know, and I still go back. I don't burn my bridges. You know, as I was telling yesterday, I was on the phone with Kwesi Chum. When I have issues, is the one I would call. If I have other issues, I would speak with uh, Mr. Jangma. I still speak to uh, Talal, you know, in Metro as well. So I started off, did electrical engineering, and we did a lot of the big projects around, you know. I see. Um, the building behind the uh, British Council was okay. one of my first projects. And Mr. Jangma just took me the left me at a site meeting and said you were on your own, you know. Wow. And I had to really study, you know, learn the, the, the trade. And I worked with some... You didn't get any shivers or anything oh, when did. you were told that oh, well, you were in charge of the whole big project. You see, in St. Augustine's College, they said, Omiya Winkin Labor, Perseverance sure. Conquers all. all. You know what I mean? So you got that and you saw that as an opportunity, but you also saw it as a challenge, you know. So you're constantly having to read, uh, asking questions. There's an interesting story that happened. We had gone to NTHC to install a generator for them. Okay. You know, so this is a big generator we are installing. So you go with uh, my senior electricians and supervisors. We do the trenching. We mount it. They mount the, the cabinets and all of that. So they finish it and say, oh, now where we How long ago was this? Oh, this is like 1996, 97. I see. So then they finish it and say, oh, okay, now we finish this, so now it's left to the engineer's part. Yeah, we are electrician <laughs> for there. It's left to the engineer's part. Interestingly, so, you know, read the manual a bit, set the thing, put the generator on that into a trip. <laughs> you know? And I was like, mm, what is this? Fortunately for me, mobile phones have just come in, you know. Okay. And yes. you had one? Yes, I, you know, so the I office see. had one. My zero two four four three six zero that number that's that same it's an old number i had okay. so then it was almost close to 12 i said you know what it's lunch time let's go to lunch when we come back we'll come and fix this problem i took the phone called one of my seniors 
you know so we went through it told me what to do what to test test what what was happening was that the voltage level was so low it was within the transition period between where the generator sees voltage and does not see it okay. so when that happens it comes on and it goes off so he, he taught me i needed to do some settings of the levels so i did that make sure it was at the level whether the thing was put it on the thing worked engineer <laughs> so <laughs> me too shut the gen shut it off turn it off and then went to went lunch. to lunch you know so i made sure i came back a few minutes after they had come and i came back i said i give them the manuals they should read it you know then they should give me the tools test the voltage test the voltage okay put it on it went off i said ah, is that so so go back into it i made them turn some knobs i knew where the knobs oh, okay be. so what you did was you had to reverse everything I reverse everything back to normal <laughs> and marked where i needed to do my settings so by the time they, we came back i fixed that the thing where they were clapping oh engineer you know so it just tells you that you might not know everything but you need to be resourceful where do you find the solutions sure, you know? sure. so you know we, there was really some scary moments i remember oh. My challenges with um, a lot of these experts, sometimes they come in and, you know, they, this is me, I've gone to engineering school, I've studied engineering. Yeah. Some of these people come and you know that they're not even a technician, but just because of the color of his skin and, you know, they are the main contractors. He wants, and he, he thinks you're a young person, he wants to rob it off you. No, you know, God created no junk. I am as good as anybody in the world. So I had a few battles, you know, and a few people... We're impressed, you know what I mean, on the fact that I will stand my own once I knew what it is that, you know. And so we, learned, we, learned, we had to learn very quickly. Mm. We had to learn very quickly. Along the line, I mean, men with strength and with leadership quality who are out there for everybody to see always get a certain level of attraction from everywhere. People gravitate towards you. Okay. Um, you did some of the root matches back in school to the girls schools and everything you mm. never spoke about relationships yeah. and yeah back then in school Ooh, relationships so uh, well, quite interesting I think we had quite a few of them okay. what a few um, you see the interesting thing was that I had to live a good balanced life okay you know attracted to women Mm. Um, still a mass server, okay. you know, you needed to make sure that you had that good life balance. So we had a few good friends in Holy Child. Mm. We used to go to man sites, you know, in Phantom Man. So you do that whole distance to Salt you Pond know, and back. You know, it was I very see. interesting. Mm. My very last route But Salt Pond was always out of bounds, isn't it? Yes, but, but, that, that, but, 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 but that one is, you know, you get, you get a the full quiet. external exit. No, no, you get a, a, a proper okay. exit. External but you exit. never got exit on each occasion, did you? Oh, most of the time I did. Okay. Most of the time. But a few times you, you oh, went for, there. Oh, for... You know, on free day, will. No, most of... I think most of the, 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 the moving out of that exit would be to go and eat wache. But to okay. go to a girl's school, because, you see, anything could happen on the way. Mm. You want How to, did you guys transport yourselves when you were going you know the, those distances? Uh, you know the interesting thing? You would look for some trust key to get somewhere. But when you, you, go, you would stop somewhere else and, and look for a taxi, a nice, a nice cab, you know, to take you to the school <laughs> to make the grand appearance, <laughs> you know, to make the grand appearance. So we did, I didn't do Wesley Girls. I did Holy Child and then I did Infant Man, you know. But interestingly, I married a, uh, you know, a beautiful woman from uh, uh, St. Mary's. I see, mm. I see. We'll talk about her. Mm. Um, so how was it like relationships back then? I mean early 80s and mm. all of that okay so what was it like if you 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 had a girlfriend mm. uh, how were you communicating ha, how were the visits like letters you know what i mean it's quite interesting i look at it back then and say you know when the letter boy comes and you don't have a letter you are in big trouble trouble okay. you know what i mean so <laughs> you know and when it's valentine's day you know it's, you know, the, it's, you're the, size, you're in trouble. it's, it's the size of the card <laughs> you know and then you would go to holy child go and see the girls you stand there for a few minutes then you have to come home but you come you're so excited you know it, it, it was it was the whole so it, it was a lot of writing you know and i think for me so I you got a lot of letters yes then? and you know oh. the interesting thing i still keep some of those letters i see i go back and i look at some my wife is what always does complaining. Mrs. Ashibe have to say hey, about she those? complains about you know she complains about them and i tell you know but she can also she, she also is able to read some of them okay. and they, they were very interesting when you read some she's of read things, some of them oh yeah yes yes because it's, okay it's and, not hidden what's the reaction like the reaction <laughs> funny yeah some of some of them you know because these are letters from 
1983 when yeah. I was in Form One. Does she? Okay, so when you have you know those little domestic you know, you know back that and happens, forth, those arguments mm, and all mm, of that, does no, she refer oh, to any of no, them? No, you see those letters. Most of the letters are the letters from secondary school. So yeah. you know, we met when we're, when uh, I was in tech. You know, so oh, yeah. the tech one might be the the one that might be threatening, but you know the secondary school ones. They're, they're funny. We read them and we laugh. I see. You know, we read them so she has laugh. a good laugh about all of them. Ah, well, she doesn't tell me, but I'm sure she, I, from the look, the look on her face, I'm sure she looked at some of them and thought, ah, I could write better letters than this. I see. <laughs> you know? I see. <laughs> so I'm, I'm imagining what could compose, what could make up uh, the, the, the first paragraph of, yeah, a, you know, of, a, you know, you of know, a regular letter. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you look at some of them, they were quite poetic, you know. I see. Not my letters, but the letters I got. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, mean, but I still don't have my letters, but, you know, the letters I, you know, I got. I look at them, and there were lots of The ladies crafts. loved you back then. They, I'm not too were, sure. You were, just yeah. a few. Just, yeah, because I, if you were getting, I mean, four or five letters per... I, I'm not too sure yeah. what I was, I don't remember the numbers. Even if there were two, I mean, two eh, but you see, consistently over a period. But it good. might be a sister who is in the Legion of Mary, you know what I mean? So uh, it might okay. be a Legion. So a, that was more of a cover-up as well. It, it you might, used it as a cover-up to, I'm not, I'm not too sure it's a cover-up. Yeah. You know, it was the fact but, that... But you, there was nothing wrong. Mm. I, there's nothing, nothing wrong with getting a relationship in church and, you know... That's fine. Home. And so those letters would come as well. Yeah. But then so, there so, were the so ones that were not... So the ones, the ones from the people, you know, who were in Legion of Mary, yes. the sisters, how... What, oh, what that line did they to as well? That, that How one, are you doing? That one is more straight. How are you okay. doing? How's Korea? The next meeting. Yeah. And those ones, you see. Boring. You, you throw them aside. You, know, you look at them and, but you see, it helps because people don't know the content. So when you even get those straight <laughs> ones, it helps add up to the numbers you're getting. Oh, I see. <laughs> so you just live the, yeah, you know, you just the hype. That, yeah, you know. Yeah, I got four letters. You know yeah. I mean? How many letters do you get in a week? I see. You know. I see. And it was, so, so, so. So you'd go to Holy Child very well dressed and very well dressed, and, uh, you know, wearing your khaki shorts, yeah. you know, and so the, the white shirts, could, yeah, the, and, the and white shirts that you wear only to Holy Child, Holy you know, Child, what I mean, or to Mansite. Yeah. I see. Mm -hmm. And uh, the juniors had to iron them for you and all. Yeah. Well, I, when we, when we became seniors, yes, the juniors had to do that. Mm. But you know, as I said to you, me, I loved using the big boys, you know. Yeah. So when I was in form five, it would be a form three boy, not a form one boy. I when see. I was in sixth form, it would be a form four boy, you know. I mean, who wow. who 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 would do that, you know? Mm. I see. Yes, I see. Mm. You were talking about your wife and how mm. you two met. Uh, mm. Tell me about her. Priscilla is a very, you know, so you see that most of the time you see me out, you don't see Priscilla around me. Priscilla is a very quiet one. She's a private person. She runs the house. You know, she's the boss. She's your boss. She's, the, yeah. she's my boss. The boss is boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she runs the house. You know I mean? With no doubt about that. I give that to her. Very industrious. She's a banker. Um, she's called Numelio. That's a... That's a uh, she's ever as she's well? ever, half mm. ever, half gone. Mm, okay. You know, but she speaks more gone than ever. You know, yeah. So how many children do you we have? We have two kids. We have Great. Bobune and uh, Adam. I see. Yeah. Now, um, you were telling me about how you two met. Mm. I mean, if, if she's a... You are the outgoing type and yeah. all up and about yeah. all over the place. And yeah. this is somebody very... Yeah, she came inward. to visit the big sister. Where? In tech. You in know tech. what I mean? Exactly. She had finished uh, A-level and came to visit her sister. And you I knew her sister? No, I knew her sister. Adam was my very good friend. You know, we went to Adam's room to go and eat. You watching know, oh, Apple, watch. and Apple. you know, oh, you know, what I mean, exactly. And you know, so and I think so. She, I went to Adam's room, saw her, came to my room with her. Immediately, Adam ran, ran in to come and say, hey, Where's my sister? and took her sister out he back to her room. But and then you we meet met. somebody for the first time and you drag her to your room. Oh, well, so we, we spoke, we spoke, and we're talking. What so did I'll you show tell you, her? I mean, I'll show you her, I'll show you her campus. You were showing up, but your room is not campus, it was your part room of is campus. Just one. It's part of campus. Isn't it? I see. I don't know what I was going to give to her. Maybe a book yeah. or something. I was going to give us something. I she see. loved to read. Ken, you, you, mm -hmm. you, 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 you're a fast guy. <laughs> Not really at all. I don't think. I, I don't think she would say I'm fast. I'm sure she would say I took too long. You took too long, rather. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because you know we, we went out for eleven okay, years what before she, we got what married. Does she, what does she tell you about meeting you for the first time as well? What did she say struck her about you? I think. I think it was a conversation. Okay. What was your what was your pickup line? Do you remember? No, I, I, see, I don't normally have a pickup line. I do deep conversations. Deep, I yes, see. very deep conversations. The interesting thing is that I, I love to have older conversations. So you find out that as a young boy, when I went to any of my friends' house, mm. you find me talking to the mother, parents, the, I see. the mother. 
most of the time, yeah. I, not the not the men, but the, the, you know. So I used to, and I, the thing that struck me about my wife was the fact that she was very matured for her age. Very, very, very deep conversations, and I think I that's see. what that's that's what keeps us together. Okay, so you had a deep conversation for what two minutes, and oh, so we had a conversation with. for quite a long, uh, quite a while. Or we you started, made the conversation, you know, linger on, and through that you so you we started, so we walked we walked to my room. You started the tour from Back your room. to my room, but by the time we were in my room, like a minute, Adam was. And then was looking for the sister, and then was back in my room to say, "Where, where Kenneth? Why have you pulled? Why have you brought my sister here?" Yeah. Then he took the sister out of the room, yeah, yeah. and I, I'm sure we didn't meet too much during mm -hmm. his. And your day. nickname was Pozo. Pozo Who yes. gave it to you? How did you get it? Wow, Pozo came in St. Augustine's College. You see, I think it was after Form One when we came back uh, from first term. You know, then there was this movie Breakdance Part One had come, okay. and you know, videos were the thing invoked, and I watched it. And they asked, you know, at the end, it was the last competition, and they asked, who's next? And he said, Ozone. I didn't hear that he said Ozone. I thought he said Pozo. Mm. So when I went back to school, you know, and you were, you were dying, dying the <laughs> thing. You know, I said, who's next? I said, Pozo. You know what I mean? And then we decided that we we're going to write the Dawns of Dawns. Okay. So I was the Dawn. I said, Don Pozo. Okay. So, you, so it was Don Pozo before... I see. And before then, I was called Fallacy. You know, I, I don't see. know how why that who, name as who well. Who gave you that name? Fallacy. I think it was because I you? loved. I loved that whole when we, you know, talking about fallacy of hasty conclusions and all of hasty you like using the word. Uh -huh. So I think I, I did a bit of that, and you know, and at some point I was also called Rob Bays. Rob Bays. Bays. You know, What's Rob Bays the rapper. Okay, you know, okay. yes. you used to rap. Rob Bays and Easy Rock. Okay. You know, you used yeah. to rap back. In I think I did a bit of that. You know, I do. Remind me of your lines. Oh, you've gone Rob Bays and I'm. I've forgotten, you know. I mean, okay. I love that it takes two songs. You know, it takes two was interesting. It takes two was very interesting. It was a very interesting song. I see, mm. I see, mm. I see. And so the pozo bit was mm. it, but you never learnt any of the dance. Oh, the I, dance well, well, we used to dance. We used to dance back in school. You know, I love to dance. Mm. I still love to dance now. Most of the time, the only thing I do now is that I dance alone in my room. I can dance for two hours in my room. It was I a see. good way of distressing, especially when I was in the university, oh. you know. When Priscilla joined you sometimes. No, Priscilla's not a good dancer. Because she's, she's, a, a, she's, yeah. not, Priscilla's not a good dancer. I she see. doesn't dance well. She dances a little bit. So at church, I dance a lot. Oh. Now the place I dance a lot more of is in church. How did you propose to her? I'm wondering. Whoa, how did I? Oh, I'm, you know, when, I'm not sure it's one of those, your romantic things, and I knelt down and all of that, you know. These were people who were very intellectual, you know what I mean? So we used to talk. We used to, you know, get things going. And, you know, so the affection was there. We didn't, you know, I, I'm not too sure we pretended. So we realized that we, we used to do things together and we started getting very close together, you know. And so we realized that we're meant for each other, you know. We realized that we're meant for each other. And it's been like that, you know. Priscilla is my friend, you know. With all the things, you know, I do wrong and all of that, you know. But because of that friendship, you know, she has a big heart. You know, she's forgiving me for some major things I've done. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go into those no, you details. No, you won't get that. <laughs> you won't get that. One of the things is the fact that, you know, this work, you know, media work has been tough. I was just saying to myself very recently that I don't know how it is like to work 8 to 5. I've not done that before. Sure. When I started, sure. you know, and I'm sure those are some of the, those are some of the things that I do that I'm sure now I can see is telling on her, you know. Mm. You work from the morning, you wake up 5.30ish, 6, you're home, you're looking to the papers, doing feedback. You do all the work, normal work, doing the work days. Production closes very late, you're waiting for that last call to tell you. The vehicle to Kumasi has moved, yeah. you know, you're sure of that and all of that. So it takes you from home. So I'm sure it's one of the things I do that she does not like, mm. that I need mm. to work at. I, I will talk about how your kids are relating to you and mm. how they also take mm. all of this mm. and, uh, mm. you know, uh, where, where you see them and how mm. they sometimes you know, pick up a little bit of the feedback mm. considering that you are out there and your face is out there. Mm. So I'm still sharing the good company of Ken Ashibe, who is Managing Director of the Graphic Communications Group. There is still more to come. Um, you know, he started with the story about sitting close to a corpse, and then <laughs> now he took us on a virtual tour of the KNUST campus, which started from his room in his <laughs> hall. Uh, started his relationship that way. I don't know what your story is, but today the focus is on Ken Ashibe. Stay right there. <laughs> My certain digger, yeah, my certain digger.
All right, so in the next quarter of an hour, we'll round up this discussion. And I want to begin with uh, Ken Ashibe's kids. Um, two kids, you know, their dad there in the limelight. Very, very busy as well. Um, how do they take all of that? You've told us about your wife. Well, um, yes. Uh, Bubune is a senior one. Then there's uh, Adam. Uh, you know, you, you know the days that Adam will tell you that you are always going out. So we are going out again. That you don't go. You know, <laughs> you know. And sometimes you 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 see that it gets to them. You know, because in the course of the week you are moving out. The weekends are things to do and all of that. So with a little time you find, you know, you want to spend some good quality time with them. You know. Um, the other people I call children as well, I have Gamali who is back in school. Uh, there's Nuna as well, all of them. You don't get to find all the time for them as well. But it's, it's a tough thing. And as, I think as parents, we need to find time for the kids. And I try to make good, you know, the little time I get with them count. And it's something that I need to do a, a lot more of. And it requires a bit of sacrifice. It requires a, a bit of balance. So you find out that now most of the time social life is virtually gone. Most of it is professional life. The only social life I keep is um, Absus and Augustine's College stuff I still do. Mm. I do church. Then I try and spend Sunday, you know what I mean, with the family, you know, try and make it a family day. I see. Ghana, I mean, you, 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 you occupy a very key position in the whole big picture. Um, there's the politics of it. There is the, the everyday issues, the current issue of the energy crisis mm. and all of mm. that well you see ghana is i'm passionate about ghana you know i i think that you know we are we're not we're not being put in the trigger of africa for nothing um we have so many things that are going right for ghana that we need to get it right and there's so much that we need to do i think for too long we have placed too we've given too much emphasis on political leadership you know, all of us as Ghanaians, we need to realize that we are in places of leadership and what role are we playing to transform this country of ours? And it's something that we all need to do. We all, and you see, I say to everybody that in any reaction, the reagent is plentiful, but the catalyst is few. We just need a few good people at particular places to be able to turn this country around. Mm. And I think there's so much we can do. Another thing that bleeds my heart about Ghana is also the self-hatred of the Ghanaian for the Ghanaian. You know, we don't support our own. We don't do too much of that. We don't give ourselves the opportunity to fail forward. A lot of the industries in Ghana have been taken over by foreigners. I'm not saying that we shouldn't get foreigners to come. No, foreigners should come, they should, but they should come and complement what we do. Ghanaians should be at the height of everything that we do. That is the only way Ghana is going to develop. A lot of the challenges we get from even the, the depreciation of the city is the imbalance when it comes to ownership, you know, because what would happen is that if you have, you know, businesses that are foreign-owned, they definitely would have to repatriate their profits outside of Ghana, and that would have to happen. So we need to love our own. We need to make sure our Ghanaians are at, at the very forefront of industry. And I am praying that uh, a typical one is for your, your, your industry, the TV industry, that we're going to do digital migration. I hope that digital migration will be done in such a way that Ghanaians would be put at the height of it. It's the reason why I support the government when they decided to abrogate the Star Time contract. TV in Ghana has been run by Ghanaians throughout. GBC has been run by Ghanaians. Multi-TV Ghanaians. Koansa, you know, you know TV running Africa. TV Africa yeah. and all of that. Why would we do it in such a way that when we do the migration, then we'll go ahead and trust this thing that Ghanaians have been running to foreigners? Let Ghanaians own it so that when the foreigners come, they'll come and support it. And for us as Ghanaians, we should ask ourselves those questions all the time. If there's any product or service that we want, let's look around and see, is there a Ghanaian product that I can also buy? You know, it's the reason why I dress the way I dress. I Monday to Thursdays, I wear Ghanaian stuff. On, sat on Fridays, when I dress down, I wear the suit. That's, what, that's, 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 <laughs> you know, that, that's, that's what I do, you know, because... At the end of the day, you know the interesting thing? This dress I bought in 1997. 1997? Yes. And I wear it wow. quite a lot. You know what I mean? Mm. And this, this is purely a Ghanaian fabric. And it still looks as good as new. Mm. You know? So Ghanaian things are good enough. And we should 
support ourselves, we should help ourselves to grow. That's the only way we'd be able to transform ourselves from the lower middle income to a proper and possibly a, a, first, a high middle income country. Mm. How tough is it for you sitting here, you know, and ensuring that there is a certain balance? Of course, the editorial team is running under you here, mm. but obviously... Um, this is a state-owned media house, mm. and mm. Uh, as, a, as media that wants mm. to bite and to punch and to be effective, you'd have to do stories and stuff that, that sometimes do not go very well in the favor of, mm. of the sitting government. Well, you know, the interesting thing is that it's not even when you work here at, you know, uh, a state-owned media, and then it's the, the good thing about it is that because of the 1992 constitution, there's a separation between the media and the state-owned media and the the government, you know. So there's a separation, uh, and I would have to give credit to the the, the, the government. You know, uh, there's not been that much uh, interference in what in what we do. You know, we do everything the way we have to do it. And you know, the constitution gives us a mandate. The mandate is from chapter 12 to hold leadership to the account of the people. We hold political leadership to account. We hold business leadership to account. We hold all of us to account. And you know, Kenneth Ashigbe will not be remembered for how much support he gave to any political party. Kenneth Ashigbe will be remembered for how much he contributed to Ghana. And I say to people that for me, my fear is not what those of you who are living with me today would say. My fear would be in a thousand years, what would I be remembered for when they come to speak, tell the story of Ghana, when they come to tell the story of graphics. So I, it's, 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 a, it's an interesting balance that we, we do. There's an interesting story of something that happened when I went to the Italian ambassador's residence. I think it was the Italian Day celebration. Madame Carpini. That yeah. was way before she came Carpini in. Carpini came yes, in. Yes, okay. exactly. And, you know, so I met, you know, one of the NBC star what, and he said, ah, you graphic of late, you know, you've been bashing us. You know, we ha we're having a conversation. I'm explaining to him, you know, the way the work goes and the fact that the editorial team is a team, you know, we look at the stories and we tell the story. I had barely finished speaking with him when... I turned around and an MPP person also said, you see, you people, you are bashing us. You are bashing us. Ah. And then I pulled him and I went to the NDC man. I told the NDC man to tell him what he was telling me a few minutes ago. And he should also tell him. So it's, that's how it is. And even when we're managing Joy FM, it was the same thing you would suffer, you know, back then with Kamala Stan and all of that. You know, you'd be bashed that, you know, you are going in one direction, mm. you're bashed in another direction. So it happens. And it's not only with the politicians. You also would get it with businesses, you know, as, you know, a media that's supposed to be critical media. And then you also, you know, are riding on the back of, ad ad you're riding on the back of advertising. You get people who complain and say, you did the story. Why did you do the story about us? But and you have to strike the balance. You have to strike the balance. Mm. And it's, it's all about balance. And you need to be objective. We need to all live by the ethics of our trade. You know? And so what is your political inclination? I, I'm a pragmatist, you know what I mean? But you see, for us, the roles that we play, we don't wear our, poli we don't wear our political colors on our sleeves. You know? So I, I, I belong to Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> 2016 is coming up mm. uh, you know um, Nigeria has had this mm. uh, President Jonathan conceded defeat and all mm. of that we've been through that already yeah, exactly. but, uh, what for you will be the key indicators for that election what we should all be asking of all the politicians who would want to govern Ghana is that what, what do they what plans concrete plans do they have for us we should, you know, currently our challenge is squalor. Our challenge is disease. Our challenge is poverty. Our challenge is illiteracy. It knows no political color. So what we want is that, you see, the, this is Ghana Limited. It will just be in choosing a chief executive. It will just be, it's an interview process. Who is the best person for the job? I have been very passionate in coverage of elections, right from Joy FM to Metro TV to Graphic. And for me, I think the will of the people have to be respected in everything that we do. So what I would want to do, the contribution I would want to make is that the will of Ghanaians would have to, have to be respected and we should ensure as a media, and that's a big role that we have to play, that we cover the elections so well, that it's so transparent, that even the person who loses would have to acknowledge the fact that he's lost. And you see, at the end of the day, we should be able to run Ghana in such a way that it would not matter who is in the Flagstaff House. Ghana would work. 
the most important thing is Ghana. And I think that for us as media, we've also allowed too much of the polarization of our country. That, and I would think that by this time, we should close our ranks. With a crisis in, we have with, with energy, close our ranks. And for too long, we are having, we are using half of our brains to rule our country. Let the MPP, let the NDC come together. Let all the engineers come together. Let all the financial people come together and see how do we resolve our problem. Maybe six months to elections, then we can go into the mode of elections again. And when we finish it, we should stop. We should close shop for elections. One sad commentary I say is that after the election petition. Immediately, the results were announced and declared at the, at the Supreme Court. Mm. The NDC started talking about the 2016 elections. The MPP started talking about the 2016 elections. Where is Ghana? Where is governance in all of this? We have a president in power. The, the, the period Sally, between... You know yeah. what I mean? There should be a period for governance. <laughs> sure. Yes. Now, uh, in wrapping up, I mean, you've been part of the big story of the multimedia group. It's 20 years. Mm. Multimedia, and I say to everybody, you know what I mean? Multimedia... It's a media house ordained by God. You know what I mean? It has a place to play. So it doesn't matter who is there. Look at, look at what has happened. Over the 20 years, all the time you would have sharp guys come and go. You know, but still the brand will be there and the people who will be there to run things will be great guys. Look at your, yourself. We've seen, we went there when other people, you know, the, the, the people who started, you know, had started and handed the button over to us. We've left. Echi and Co. are still running the show. Things are going on. And I think multimedia has played a yeoman's role, you know, in our country, Ghana. When you start talking about elections, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it was there, you know. And now if you talk about digital TV, satellite TV, multi-TV, you know, blaze the trail. Sure. If, you know, local language TV, we've done it in all places. And, uh, you know, my mentor, Kwesi Chum, great guy, you know. He, he's brought a lot of people up, and I'm sure that's one of the things that he'll be remembered for. It's the people, the lives that he's been able to touch and transform. Mm -hmm. You know, building an industry from something that did not used to be an industry. My prayer is that there will be more 20 years to come, and then when we are dead and gone, there will still be multimedia still, you know, making the waves. Ken, thank you so much. Absolutely. <laughs> Pleasure. Action. Thanks so It's much. always great to have uh, you around, and mm. uh, we're surely going to catch up on a mm. few more of the things Definitely. that we can't say here. You see? <laughs> well, Ken Ashibe, Managing Director of the Graphic Communications Group, has been my guest tonight. Next week, another big surprise, but I trust that you've been wholly and highly entertained by this fine gentleman who has so many parts to him. Thanks to the whole production team. And uh, you enjoy the rest of the weekend. I will be back on your TV here on the Joy Prime channel. My name is Nathaniel Atto. Have a wonderful Saturday evening. My